Hey, everybody, and thanks for joining me on Igniting Courage podcast. So one of the main topics that I speak on is communication, specifically embracing the discomfort of difficult conversations. And I recently had cause to put my own teaching into action with an issue with my partner. Now, he and I have been together for over three years, and our personality styles simply work really well together. We adore each other. We have a blast together, whether we're traveling to far-flung locations or whether we're just sitting on the couch doing nothing. We're both very independent, which works beautifully. I leave town. We both do our own thing, and then when we get back together on the weekends, we soak up our time together. Now, after 46 years of searching and two failed marriages, this relationship brings me an amazing calm, and it's just something I've never had before. That said, it's not perfect, (laughs) and expecting it to be would be unrealistic. Every once in a while, he'll do something that just really frustrates me, or vice versa, I suppose. I guess I'm not perfect either, and when I don't have the tough conversation and let him know that it's bothering me, it festers. In this particular instance, it was his responsiveness to texted questions when I'm on the road. Now, I'd I'd try to plan a night out with friends or try to plan a vacation or something else. And I'd shoot him a quick text and I wouldn't hear back. Now, I'm not even asking him to text back like within a couple minutes or within an hour. But for days, I wouldn't hear from him. And I would get so frustrated. And my internal dialogue would start to say, come on, just send me a message. It's not like I'm expecting you to text me back within 15 minutes or anything. 24 hours. I know you're looking at your phone at least every 24 hours. Can't you take 27 seconds to text? me back and my internal little dialogue is swirling around and down and down into this negativity and I'd get indignant until finally I was like I've got to talk to him about this because he doesn't know and then the other voice on my other shoulder would start but and he's awesome come on this isn't a big deal suck it up are you really gonna get all angry about this seriously this is not really a problem do you want to ruin a few days that you have home together for a tough conversation plus he doesn't mean it it's all your interpretation relax sheesh and I would talk myself right out of talking to him and the resentment would mount Now, Dan has a history of being fabulous when it comes to this kind of tough conversation and having them in an effective way. I know now how to have them, but that hasn't always been the case. In fact, in this exact situation, I believe destroyed my first marriage. I was really angry. I approached something all wrong. He'd get defensive. I'd shut down. Bada bing. Nothing solved. Resentment continues to mount until I completely gave up on the relationship. How's that working out for me? (laughs) So this is a deep-seated fear for me and clearly not a method of dealing with challenges that I wanted to continue, though. I wanted to do something differently. So finally, after avoiding this conversation for probably about three months and telling all 15 audiences to embrace the discomfort and have the tough conversation, I kind of slapped myself upside the head and said, hey, honey, you got to have the conversation. You're being a hypocrite. And it sucks. So I sat down and I wrote myself a script. Not like I was going to take it in with me and say, Dan, I want to talk to you about a difficulty. No, you're not going to take it in with you. But I wanted to plan out my words. Because if I was trying to improvise in the moment when I was nervous, A, I'd probably chicken out. Or B, I'd say it in the wrong way. So tip number one When you're about to walk into these tough conversations, write out your opening line so you can plan how you're going to say it and how you're going to present the problem in a mature, calm way that's going to be more likely to be received well. So I needed to phrase it not as you're doing something wrong, um, as understandably and likely that would make him defensive. Instead, I needed to present it as there's something that you're doing that makes me feel a certain way. And I know that's not your intention, so I want to let you know that this is happening so you can fix it, because I'm pretty sure that you don't want me to feel that way. And I'm getting resentful, and I don't want to feel that way about you. And I want you to tell me if I'm doing something that's doing the same to you, because I love you, and I want this to work, and I have really good intentions. But I needed to say it in a less bizarre and freakishly desperate kind of way, right? But that's the way I needed to approach it. So tip number two, when you're writing your script, approach the conversation in a let's solve this together, I'm not blaming you kind of way. 
That way the other person on the receiving end of the conversation is a lot less likely to respond poorly. Then pick your time and rip off the Band-Aid. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to say I actually started the conversation the next time I got home after writing the script. I chickened out again. But finally, I said, Anne, tonight's the night. Tell him how you feel because he doesn't want you to feel that way and he would like to know. So I did. And the conversation went very, very well. And it was very, very short. He thanked me for letting him know. He promised to try to get back to me and also said, just call me if you want an answer right away. Sometimes I miss text messages. The conversation was like five minutes. I hemmed and hawed for three months over a five-minute conversation. And really, it was only the first sentence that was the scary part. Once I had it out there in a tactful, respectful way, we had a great conversation, solved the problem, built a stronger trust together. And he's gotten a lot more responsive to text messages. And sometimes, if I haven't heard from him, instead of getting all frustrated and swirling around, I pick up the phone and call him. Bada bing! Problem actually solved. Now, if you just do the dishes. <laughs> if you want to get better at these tough conversations, it's upside down. Crucial, Converse, Crucial Conversations is a fabulous, fabulous book for learning to kick off these frustrating conversations in a tactful and respectful way so that the person on the other side of the conversation is willing to engage. Highly recommended. You can get it on Audible. I listened to it and then I went out and bought it because it was so good. It's really easy to get absorbed in the indignant, resentful thing and throw the they should know and they're doing this to me attitude towards the problem. But if we approach it that way, the likelihood that it's actually going to get solved is like practically nothing. So rev up your emotional intelligence and see if you can approach the problem in a collaborative way. The result is not only solving the problem, but also building trust which is always a good thing. So good luck.